Already, welcome back. We're going to just finish up with um, some summaries and strategies for verifying. So you've seen all of the identities. You've seen how to simplify. But what happens if I tell you something must be equal to something? This is called a verification. You can either prove a verification is true or you can prove a verification is false. Nine times out of ten, you're proving a verification is true. So if you end up with a false, you probably made a mistake. Unless I specifically tell you find the error in this, more often than not, you're proving something actually exists. So here are some tips and tricks. Tick trip tips and tricks. So start with the more complicated side. For me, the complicated sides could be negatives, fractions, more than one type of trig, trig that isn't sine cosine. It really just depends on the question. Um, you're always trying to keep your identity in mind. Use your identities first, reciprocal, quotient, Pythagorean, other basic identities such as the co-function and even odd. If those fail you, you're going to use algebraic operators such as combining fractions, rewriting fractions. Um, we haven't hit sums and differences just yet. We'll see that in just a little bit. Um, but you can multiply expressions such as multiplying the conjugate. You can factor, blah, blah, blah. So these are the algebraic properties that you use to, multi uh, to figure out uh, identifications, so verifying identities. Convert a denominator in the form that's basically, hey, use your conjugation. One plus something squared, one, sorry, one minus, one plus something times one minus something becomes one squared plus, or sorry, minus the other squared. Oh my God, I can't talk today. I'm sorry. Conjugation. It's an important thing. All right. And then finally, if all of that fails, you're going to write each side separately to reach a common intermediate expression. What that means is, let's say you do the whole left side and it never looks like the right. But you get this down pretty darn far and you're like, I'm down to one or two trigonometric values. Something is going wrong. Try the right hand side. And if that you never know, this might simplify one more time and now they match. So sometimes you're just not seeing that both sides had to be messed with. Now, remember, this is a verification at no point. Are you solving? So please don't move things over. This is not a solve. We have not reached solves yet. We will get there soon. All right. Um, and then finally, my fail safe. Worst case scenario, turn everything into sines and cosines. Tangent, cotangent, use their uh, quotient identity. Secant, cosecant, use the reciprocal identity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so these are the kinds of things that you're about to see. You're going to see just basic identities, what happens when you combine, multiply, factor, and working each side separate. So here I have tan squared x plus 1 over 1 blah, 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 blah. So I am trying to prove that all of this equals secant to the fourth. I want to start with the harder side. So the left-hand side looks way more complicated than the right. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. Ta-da! Hey, I see a lot of different things. Tangent, that could be both reciprocal and quotient. That could be a reciprocal identity. But because I see squareds, wouldn't it be smart to start with its Pythagorean identity? So I will. Tan squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. Ta-da! Now I can use my reciprocal identities. Secant is just 1 over cosine and cosine is just 1 over secant. Well, it doesn't matter to me which way I go, but I'm trying to get them to all be the same. Now, it doesn't matter, but with my end goal in mind, would it be smart to convert this to 1 over cosine? Yes or no? Either way, you're going to get there, but because I know I'm already moving to secant, why not keep it as secant? So that's why I chose the path I chose. So how do you uh, divide a fraction? Just a recall, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. Flip the bottom. So I flip the bottom and I end up with this. If I have two secants multiplied by two more secants, I actually have four secants. So ta-da, we verified. That's it. Your answer is literally all of this. I want to talk about rejecting, though, because here is where it's the most important. Let's say I do all of this, and for some reason at this point I make a mistake or I get stuck, and I can't see moving to this next step. Okay, well, let's say I'm like, mm, let's try again. I don't want you to erase. I literally want you to reject and then try again. I need to see your thought process. It's going to help me help you. So please make sure you're showing me your thought processes. Don't processes. Okay, don't erase. All right. Here's another one. What do I do with this one? Whoa, okay, well the right hand side definitely looks more complicated than the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and start there. Hey, look at what you got on bottom. 
those kind of look like Pythagorean identities, but they're not quite there. So what's our big v, uh, so vocabulary word? Starts with a C, conjugation. Fantastic. So I'm going to get my least common denominator by multiplying by, well, what do I multiply? I multiply this by the negative and this one by the positive. Again, I want that conjugation. So here it is, 1 minus 1 plus. Now on the denominator, I'll simply end up with 1 minus cosine squared. That's all I need to know about the denominator. Up top, I have to actually multiply those out, and it's up to me whether I keep them in their uh, fraction, I mean their parenthesis form, or I actually uh, distribute it throughout. So I left it in its fraction form. Again, I told you in a couple slides before, I said the reason I do this is because I have no idea whether or not something is going to disappear yet. So it's smart to just leave it until I'm ready to deal with it. So I dealt with the bottom up top. I went ahead and distributed because I see it's kind of chaos up top. So I went ahead and distributed and look at that. Now some stuff very easily does uh, disappear. The sine and negative sign will disappear, but the sine X cosine X cannot because there's two of them. They, uh, they don't, they're not opposite signs. They're both negative. So it's going to multiply instead. So I end up with negative 2 sine x cosine x all over 1 minus cosine squared. Hey, 1 minus cosine squared is a Pythagorean identity, so I'm going to change it to sine squared. And because I have sine squared, either either of these is okay, but some of us need to see that physically, if I have one sine up top and two signs down bottom, how many am I actually removing? Only one. Here's another common mistake I see is kids will just go ahead and remove this entirely. That doesn't work. If I have one up top and two down bottom, you got to make sure you're canceling out correctly. So now I'm down to negative two cosine x over sine x. Hey, that looks really close to my end answer. So what do I see? I see the quotient identity. Cosine over sine is cotangent, so I replace Ah, ta-da, I have finished my verification. That's it. All right, what about uh, this example? Again, how do we pick this? Well, to me, both sides are equally kind of complicated. The only reason I picked the left-hand side uh, over the right-hand side is because it has the fraction. That's really the only reason I picked it. So I start with this. Again, my denominator almost looks like a Pythagorean identity, so I'm going to go ahead and conjugate. Boom, I conjugated, and now I end up with an actual Pythagorean identity down bottom, and ta-da, I have this. Okay, so what can I do with that? I can convert it to its Pythagorean identity of tan squared x. Now where do I go? Mm, I have some choices. Okay, so I could distribute the sign. I could change this to its quotient or reciprocal. I could also change secant to its reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and deal with the quotient identity, sine squared over cosine squared, because I can flip that and bring it out to cosine squared over sine. And look at that. One of my signs is going to disappear. Now, again, you see why I chose not to distribute this until I knew I was ready to use it. I wasn't ready to use it ever, so I'm going to go ahead Ahead and get rid of that sign. Now I have this information. Okay, cool. So we're getting a little bit closer, but I recognize something. Cosine and secant have a friend. So if I know that secant is the reciprocal, I can go ahead and change that. If I multiply out, so in this case, I didn't just multiply one time and get rid of it. I had to multiply both. So that's where this one came from. I can cancel out one of those, right? Right here, this, oops, this cancels and this cancels, and I end up with this information. And here is where a lot of kids might get stuck, but I would remind you, if you have a single value on bottom, or like a single concept, something plus something or something minus something, all divided by something, a least common denominator, then you can butterfly. It's the opposite of your LCD. So I butterfly it out. I end up with cosine x over sine x plus cosine squared over sine. Hey. That's this. All I did was remove out one of these cosines because I see something happening here. I recognize its friend, the quotient identity of cotangent, and look at that. I finished. Ta-da! These are difficult. I recognize that. The only way to kind of get through these is to see questions solved and you practice with them. See questions solved and you practice with them. All right, I think this is my final example. Uh, actually, no, I got two more. So here I have a very complicated left-hand side. So obviously I'm going to start there. And this one is going to involve some factoring. So do I see any repeaters? In fact, I do. Two of them. I see cosine tan and cosine tan. So I'm going to go ahead and yank those out. Divide by cosine tan x, and I end up with this. Hey, 
that's a little bit easier to look at, especially because secant squared x minus tan squared x is literally a Pythagorean identity that equals 1. How nice is that? We get to get rid of that whole fraction, or whole parentheses. And now I end up with cosine x tan x. Well, it's not quite sine x, but I can see why I'd be super close because, hey, isn't that my friend, the quotient identity? So I go ahead and change it. My cosines delete, and ta-da, I'm left with sine. That's simple. All righty, here's my final example. Now in this one, mm, both sides seem equally complicated. There's no fractions. There's no negatives. There's nothing to tell me, hey, use this side over the other. So I might as well check out both together, right? So I'm going to go ahead and try the left-hand side first. And I have cotan, x, cotan cubed plus cotangent. So those are um, a greatest common factor. So I can see a repeater. So I can go ahead and factor it out. Hey, and now my parentheses becomes a Pythagorean identity of cosecant squared. And cotangent is the quotient identity. And cosecant is the reciprocal identity. So if I multiply, now becomes a fraction I can multiply across with. Cosine times that is the reciprocal. Hey, I didn't even need to touch the right-hand side. I finished it. Ta-da! It's that simple. There are some instances where I would end up with this becoming this, and this wouldn't have been my end answer. Maybe this would have been, um, let's see. Uh... Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so it's possible that you could have, I could have written this, in right here or and you might have said anyway basically what i'm trying to say is if you got to a point where you couldn't see this answer start working on this guy to get to this answer that's what i'm that's all i'm trying to say but i think that's it here's a summary of those strategies again use your identities um Use uh, algebraic operators such as fractions. The conjugate is so important here. Sums and differences we'll see eventually, and um, least common denominators are so important here. Work each side separate if you can't find a common intermediate expression, and at the bare minimum, convert everything to sine and cosine. All right. Um, you're going to move on to the discussion, but here is your last question, and congratulations, you made it to the end of the video.